are always kind of an underground thing, as what I thought. And then just in the last two or three years, it's really developed. And I think that's where these panelists are going to fill in the rest and tell you how that really changed just in the last few years. Because that's when um, I heard of Jill uh, Bliss maybe about three years ago. I've known about Bizarre Bizarre and actually worked at Bizarre Bizarre last year on someone else's booth. I was a booth babe. Um, and Etsy has made this meteoric rise, and uh, and uh, they they they're a big imprint on uh, the craft market and craft world right now. So that said, uh, let's just hear from uh, Joel Bliss first. Um, so this is my website. I've been a crafter since 2001. Um, I guess before it was even a so-called movement. I started making things just from leftover materials in my studio. I was working as a, a freelance illustrator and graphic designer in New York. Um, and we started selling things online, and um, online we started finding other people across the country who were also making crafts. And it was really the beginning of this whole community that has uh, it's gotten so huge, I can't even really um, grasp how huge it is. Or, what a big impact we have on other people at this point. Um, but I started out, like I said, in 2001, and um, at the time I had a boyfriend who was in a band, and so I would get stuck at the merch table, and I started <laughs> selling my things at the merch table <laughs> alongside the CDs, which actually, if you talk to other, other crafters like me who started around the same time, that was pretty much the beginning. <laughs> of the craft movement. It was, it was an offshoot of the independent music movement. Um, it was the girls versus the boys kind of thing. <laughs> so this is, I started out making, and this will give you a whole idea of um, my work process too. I started out making these date books, well for myself, and then other people liked them, so then I started printing them. And it's just an undated date book, weekly planner type of a thing. And then I decided I wanted to make a book to carry it in. And then I decided, oh, I need some pockets for my pens and my papers. And then wouldn't it be cool if like, it could sometimes function as my wallet? And so I put credit card pockets in the back. And then as I was using it and like selling it to other people, I realized, oh, people are really stuffing it full. So then I've got to add the elastic band to keep everything in there. Um, so that's one, one example. The first product I did for Chronicle Books is this journal. Um, and as an artist, I'm also an artist, and I, I tend to uh, work with native plants is my specialty. And so this is all the native plants. When I moved back to San Francisco, um, I was really interested in the native plants of the area, and I went to the Presidio, which is the national park. And so these are some of the flowers, the native flowers from, from that. And, um, I don't know, I guess, I guess that's it for me for now. <laughs> I'm the founder of the San Francisco Bazaar Bazaar, which Eric was the booth babe at. That uh, was a really nice term. Um, also, I co produced the Maker Fair San Francisco in Austin. And Bazaar Bazaar is a jury craft show, which means that we actually have other members from outside the craft community come in and judge the artists for our show. Right, how many people have actually been to a indie craft show? Let's see a show here. Okay. Some people. How many people have bought something that's handmade? Awesome. You're all part of our community, you know that, right? Because <laughs> Bizarre Bizarre is all about handmade. So um, I was invited today to talk about the show and basically talk about the movement of indie craft. And what indie craft is, is also been called the DIY generation, or um, what Bizarre Bizarre in particular likes to call itself is the punk rock generation of the craft world. So it's a lot about people who are not necessarily traditionally skilled in certain craft areas making products um, by hand, inspired by their own ideals and traditions. And it's really in response to a lot of the crafts of the 50s, 60s, and 70s that our parents did, that which were really kind of more generic, instruction-based, and focused on making perfect items. Where, whereas our generation, I think, is more focused on making things by hand and not necessarily focusing on a perfect finished product. And it's also about focusing on supporting sustainable economies. So all Bizarre Bazaars like to support local artists. We do have artists that come from out of the country even, um, across country to come to different shows across different coasts, but mostly focusing on locally made items. Um, the SF Weekly recently wrote a review, you know, appreciating the fact that there's a lot of person-to-person -person interaction and that's what Bizarre Bazaar does. We cultivate community, we allow you to meet the artists, we create an environment where it's friendly and you can find out more about their work. So you have more of a story to tell when you bring your product home. 
the idea behind Bizarre Bizarre is you too can do that. You can make any craft you want. You can you can be an indie crafter. Um, and also community giving. We're going to donate our proceeds to uh, nonprofits. Our door fees are actually going to go towards arts education for children in San Francisco. And we support emerging talent. So we've decided to implicitly have a rule where 20% of our applicant pool are people who have never done a show before. So it's a really great venue for people to kind of break out. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Stinchcomb. Uh, I know it's a, it's a difficult, <laughs> difficult name to pronounce. No, it's okay. Uh, Etsy's about three and a half years old. Uh, we started it in Brooklyn, New York. We're still based in Brooklyn. It's, it's a marketplace for buying and selling anything that's handmade, but it's uh, individuals to individuals. You can't uh, be reselling. You can't. Uh, I mean, hypothetically, you could be a company buying, but it is about the maker selling directly to the consumer. Um, every artist gets their own shop. There's about uh, 180,000 artists uh, currently selling on Etsy right now. Um, about 2 million products. In 2006, we sold $3.8 million of product. In 2007, we sold $26 million, and this year we'll sell $100 million. So it's, it's pretty pretty astronomical growth. Everyone who was involved in the early days of Etsy was coming from some sort of artistic endeavor, whether it be a band or a visual artist or furniture maker. And um, when we were tr trying to get the word out there, we took a very grassroots approach um, <clears throat> to growing Etsy, a really like one-on-one, -on -one, like get out on the streets and try to develop the community around the brand. And that's been our kind of MO ever since. Um, and it's worked really well for us, you know, we think a lot about like, okay, we're an e-commerce website, but, um, you know, we're also kind of a community site and to us, the two are completely inseparable. Um, if you go back, you know, a hundred years, right, you would gather the community in the marketplace were, were one and the same, you know, you gather at some central place and you talk about politics or the weather, and, you know, you'd meet a wife, you'd smell things you'd never smelled and, you know, just see things. And, and so the two were completely intertwined and that's really important when the product is unique. We wanted to create areas where the members themselves could also get together and share knowledge and advice and that you know, collectively, this is going to kind of grow the business and, and get the word out there. So uh, that's what we've done. Um, this is kind of our hack together community section. Uh, we have kind of classic things like chat um, forums, which just to give you an indication is about 60,000 unique posts a day. So they're very active. Um, <clears throat> we started this multimedia blog called The Stork for no good reason, that's my fault, sorry. <laughs> um, it's actually changed a little bit about since then, since this slide was uh, made, but it's a place too where actually a lot of our users are, are creating the content, where um, we're profiling people on video profiles, and we're also doing a lot about education, so you know, how to take better photographs, how to market your business. All of these things that are essential skills to small business people, but also, you know, help help fuel our growth.